Now, let's get on back to this conversation. We're going to shift it a little bit. Just a little bit. And, and just a little bit. You know, you know, one of the things we were saying earlier, Herschel, is that, uh, and one of the things I was saying anyway, was that uh, oppression has a tendency of trickling up. And, and what I mean is that uh, the, the, the treatment that we allow for the least of these, the treatment that we allow for those who are quote unquote deserving, it sets the floor for your treatment. Uh, if, we're, if we're a state that has a death penalty for undeserving rapist black men, uh, uh, we're also going to have a death penalty for you. Right. If, we're, if, we're, if we're a state that has incarceration and mass incarceration, despite the fact that you're less likely to be swept up in it, you're still, uh, you still have a decent likelihood of being swept up in it. Uh, the, same, the, the same marijuana, the same crack, the same heroin that I would go to jail for doing, it's still marijuana and heroin that you could still go to jail for doing regardless of whether you're white, black, Latino, or anything in between. So, you know, uh, one of the things we have to be clear about is that we're talking about oppression. You know, even though it's concentrated disproportionately on black and brown bodies, uh, that does not mean it's, it's not exclusive. exclusive. It's exactly, it does, that does not mean it's exclusive exactly. to those bodies. So uh, what we're doing when we allow this oppression to take place is we are setting the boundaries for the treatment of everybody. Yeah. And uh, this is the one of the clearest uh, illustrations of this is what's going on with ICE right now. now it started as a uh, as something that was targeted to undocumented people, but right now we are seeing um, uh, uh, citizens, quote unquote citizens, that are getting getting swept up in some detention facilities. There was a story uh, about a young man. I think he was a uh, high school kid. Yeah, yeah, he lost. He, he was he was only in an ICE facility for 26 days, and he lost 23 pounds. 23 pounds. He said that he did not, he, he was never once given the opportunity to bathe himself. His skin was dry, his hair was messed up. He had, he had, he had medical issues. And he personal. was born here. Yeah, he was born here. Born here. Now, born now, 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 now this, what this does, it does a twofold thing. It, what it does is that it illustrates the, uh, it illustrates the fact that quote unquote citizenship is not the problem here. The problem is who is considered a legitimate citizen and right. who is not. Right. And that, that, that was actually what the 2016 election was about, as I have consistently said. It was always about who was a deserving, who, who was a deserving recipient of state largesse and state attention, and who wasn't? And uh, again, this is being delegated right now, but in a more fundamental way. And I, I, one thing I want to be clear about is that when I say citizen, I, I, I want to foreground the fact that I don't actually agree with that term. I think that's a term that we should stop using and stop using. You know, we, we're talking about human beings fundamentally. And, uh, inside these borders, human beings' rights should be abridgeable. I think that everyone should universally be allowed to put. I think everyone should be universally allowed to benefit from these programs. And we're talking about programs that are funded by tax money, and these undoc undocumented immigrants, they pay oh, taxes. They, tax they are paying they are. taxes. They have they residents. They, 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 are, they, are benefiting, uh, they are benefiting the economy. And even if they weren't, they are still human beings, and we have a responsibility, a moral responsibility, and you know, and a practical responsibility to ensure that they are being uh, as taken care of as well as anybody. And I think that citizenship, one of the problems with citizenship is that it gives people, uh, right now it's given white supremacists, but it gives people in general an excuse to tear how we treat certain human beings. It gives them an excuse to say, oh, you're, you're not a citizen, so I don't, I, don't, I don't actually have to treat you with the same level of regard that I would treat anyone else. And we have to really, we have to reconsider and get away from that because one of the problems and one of the consequences of that is that we get situations like this where the levers of fascist governments and uh, the levers of state are being used to grind down uh, uh, black and brown people, and, and eventually it will, it will, it will elevate to, to include poor and middle class white person. That's why. I hear you talking, right? Yeah, but that sounds awfully Christian of you, dog. That don't mean, that, wait, 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 that sounds, that sounds like some Christian guy. That's what that, that's what that sounds like. That, 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 that sounds like, that was, that, that, that was, that was, that sounds like that was of my neighbor as myself. That, right, that, that sounds awfully Christian of you. Just take care of people just because they eat. That sounds awfully Christian of you. When would we ever do? When would we ever get an idea like that? Uh, that sounds awfully Christian of me. Like the, you, you, you act like this country was founded on Christian morals. Well, says that it is. Are you out of your mind? Take care of people. Give me your porn, your time, and your hello mess. Are you crazy? You out your mind. That don't sound like where I live at. Do <laughs> you think that's what we should do? Huh? Welcome in the poor, the huddle masses, Absolutely. those yearning to live free. That's 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 the creed here, right? So that's you're saying true. so you're saying that, that that's based in Christian values that people always tout. 
to hold people down with? That's the same thing you saying? Yeah, we should right. do it. Oh, right. okay. I'm just checking. Okay. I can't hear. And you know, well, well, one historical note that I wanna I wanna make sure that we include. Uh, you know, a uh, lot of these white people. Uh, they may be Americans right now, but they all came from somewhere. You got a lot of Scottish Americans, a lot of Irish Americans, a lot of Nerla, a lot of Scandinavian Americans, a lot of people, you know, Russians and whatnot. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah, so, 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 yeah, yeah, lot, lot, lots of lots of Ukrainians you know, all, all. And, and came here looking for what? Antoine? Freedom from oppression. Well, well, what, well, 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 well. One thing we got to note, though, uh, not only did the quote unquote original citizens come here. Uh, when America was already occupied, but most of these people who came here, you know, the Irish people who came here during the potato famine and the 1800s, uh, uh, they came here when America fundamentally had an open border policy, Herschel. America was open borders. They had no pretext. They had no requirements to become a citizen. All this citizenship uh, ship test, all this was waiting in line. That's not something that, you know, Bill O'Reilly, he had, he had a funny post where he was... Uh, he was in Ireland talking about how you can't use white privilege against him because his family came here in 1845. But you know, but, uh, but, 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 but wait a second. Not, not, only, not, only, not only did they come of their own free will, 1845, there was no border protection to, to speak of. They could come in New York, uh, join the military, and then become a citizen, Herschel. That's, that's, that's all they had to do was come here, and that that has been that that, that has been how America has tiered immigration almost since its founding. And the only time that it has limited immigration. Was uh, when it limited against the Chinese and when it li- against Asian populations generally, and when it limited against uh, um, the Mexican population generally. Before you go too far, this is why I just want to stick up right there. You said they would come here and join the military, right? Yeah, that's all they had to do. Like, like certain kinds of people. Wait, yeah. wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've read several <laughs> stories that U.S. soldiers <laughs> were being detained by ICE. Hmm. U.S. soldiers. Now they took the oath to defend this country, and are still treated like nonsense. That's right. Again, these are things that you got to be mindful. Of. See, people are not paying attention. People are not paying. Like I said, they're not paying attention. But 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 this you know, we, we have to realize that you know uh, we, we we keep naturalizing things that that are effectively new. Normalizing. Yeah yeah yeah. We keep normalizing. You know, the DHS is only twenty years old, Herschel. I got CDs older than that. I got socks over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm just right. saying, I'm just saying, the, the DHS and ICE are 20 years old, and we're acting like the way that we enforce immigration is the only way the immigration way right. can be enforced when, in fact, you know, we had a, we literally had for long, long decades in this country's history an open border policy, particularly with European countries, which you just allowed to come over and, and generally, quote unquote, become Americanized uh, uh, over the span of a generation. You know, it's you know we go. On. The, 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 there's a there's a hypocrisy here that we have to make sure that we may, we keep note of. And uh, when we when we defer to citizenship as uh, as a as a mechanism by which we make rights coherent, what we're doing is that we're applying an uh, inherently a lot a double standard. Now, if you have a citizen, you will necessarily have a non-citizen. The, the, that's the consequence of citizenship. If you have a citizen, you will necessarily have a non-citizen, which and the state will treat that non-citizen like a non-person. And we have to be very clear about the dangers of that. Just like oppression can triple up, uh, non-citizenship, the, the oppression that's in the inherent to both non-citizenship and the appearance of non-citizenship, which black people face, even black citizens face, uh, uh, that trickles up. That trickles up. <laughs> you know, I... I just, it's just the hypocrisy, and, and this is why, I, you know, sometimes I'll stop you because, Antoine, you, you know, the things you say, I, this is America, dude. <laughs> you know, the stuff you talk about is so un-American. You talk about letting people in. You talk about giving tired people that are running from oppression a fair chance, a chance at prosperity. More than a chance. You know. A uh, guarantee of, you know, of, of prosperity. Yeah, you know, you talking like this is what this country was founded on. I, you know, that's why you talking crazy, boy. You talking crazy. Not just more people. I ain't talking crazy. Cause I don't know what you're talking about. Give us your, your, your tires, your poor, your hollow mess. You can put that on statue. Those, those yearning to be free. Huh? This, <laughs> this country was founded by people that were running away from oppression. They were running away from oppression, and then you come here. And bring people here and oppress them. And before you do that, you try to kill off the indigenous people of a place that was already inhabited. And for the most part, peaceful and sustainable. Mm. 
And you cracked on it so much that the beauty of this country is being choked out by deregulation, by overcrowding, by overdrilling, just not take care of the earth. This earth was given to us to, to be good stewards over and we're not. You, can, you can't ride a free mule to death, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, at some point in time, you got to give it a break. And again, if and you if, say that while the Arctic is on fire. Right. And if, right, exactly. If the good Christian folks, <clears throat> the good Christian folks of all races <laughs> of this country that was founded on <clears throat> Christian values would live up to their Christian values, uh, we would be the uh, we would be the majority. Mm. Uh, if this country really lived up to what it says that it's founded on, and it's so hell bent on having the Ten Commandments up everywhere, and having in God we trust put up on schools and buildings and coins and coins, if you are truly a godly country, a godly nation, and I read the book that you say that you believe in. And I don't see what I don't see you putting into practice the things that you say that you believe in. I got a problem. All I want is what's mine, according to God. All I want is what's mine, according to the law. And what's mine is back pay for my ancestors. You know, I don't need welfare. I don't. I just need my back pay. I need my inheritance. Like like Mr. Trump got. He got his inheritance. I want mine. Mm. His daddy stole and robbed and did what he did, locked black folks out, and made his fortune. He left his son an heir to his millions. I want, I want what my ancestors worked for. Give me my inheritance. You know, you want your piece? There's a there's an inheritance tax. Take your little piece and give me the rest. And let me go for mine. You know what I mean? If if I just started off, if I could start off with a hundred million dollars, I'd be doing well too. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I would be doing very well as well. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't get left a hundred million dollars. I didn't get left property. I didn't get left a way to 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 build upon the wealth that was already there. So again, again. Good Christian folks, examine your heart and see what you're doing. This country always touts that it's a Christian, uh, a Christian inspired country. I'm only going by what they said. If that is the truth, then you need to recheck your back. You sit by and watch a baby steal in the street, women dragged away, women disrespected, women raped and tortured, men it's the same way taken away, put back in the chains, and put back in the damn field, Antoine, picking cotton, tobacco, fruit, and vegetables. This is why they don't mind deporting so-called uh, illegal aliens. This is why. Because all they're going to do is the so-called citizenry, the black and brown, they're going to lock you up and put you right back in the field and give you 20 cents an hour. So technically, it ain't slavery. You know, my only addition to that, Herschel, is that, you know, I like that you know that this is a Christian nation, but Jesus also said you should know them by their fruits. Well, the fruit is rotten. That's right. The head, from the head to the butt. That's right. Rotten. So again, all I'm saying, Antoine, is people will say I'm not like that. And I'm not condemning anybody other than the white supremacists. Now, if that's not you, and you happen to be white, I'm not condemning you. All I'm saying is, Live up to what you say that you are. That's all I'm saying. Don't sit idly by when my children are being miseducated and mishandled. Don't sit idly by when my children are being starved to death and given subpar food. Don't sit idly by when I'm locked out from working. Not for a handout. When I'm locked out from working just because I happen to be darker than you. Don't sit idly by. That's all I'm saying. Live up to what you say that you believe in. Good white folks, good brown folks, whatever you are, I'm not condemning the white race. You understand what I'm saying, Antoine? What I'm saying is if you are not that, live up to what you say that you are. That's all. This country said it is built on Christian values. 
It has a God we trust on it, even on its money, even on its money, in God we trust. Well, God has a book or two, and in none of the books, whether it's the Quran, the, the Holy Bible, the Torah, or the, or the, or the Holy Writs of the Catholic Church, none of them say to treat people in the way that this country is treated people. Mm. So, I'm only saying, live up to what you say that you are. That's all. That's all. I'm not condemning anybody. The white supremacists, they're doing what they do. They're doing what they do. And don't think white folks, if they could get rid of us, you wouldn't be next. Because if you're not going to fall into line with their belief system, plenty of white folks have been killed that time. We were talking about that on the way over here. You know? And again, we belong to a certain group that's that's overly policed, that's overly incarcerated, that's overly abused, so we're trying to fix ours first. Again, we are not excluding anyone. So if that's what you hear and you talk about me, roll the tape back because you're a liar and you need to clean your ears out. Right? But I belong to a tribe. Not by my choice, but it's the way it is. We are all from different places in this world. We are not a monolithic people. But since we are in a place that puts us together based on our skin tone or the melanin in our skin, we touch. in order to make this work, we got to come together. The only thing that joins, if, if the only thing that joins us is if the melanin in our skin, then so be it. Then so be it. 